It's my first video back in over a year. Oh hey team, it has been a while. We're talking over a year since I last uploaded a video. And that was the Hurtwood 50k race that I did. In the last year, we've relocated to the other end of the country. We now live in a beautiful area in Dorset. We have rescued a street dog who then got attacked three weeks after we got him, so he's reactive. And we're working through all of that. And it's just been a really stressful year <laughs> of obstacles where I've just not really wanted to pick up the camera. So please be kind, bear with me. I am back. I've got some very, very exciting races this year, which is what this first video is. It's the first episode in a new series, which we'll get onto in just a second. But we're just gonna go straight in, no trailer, no intro, just let's cut straight to the running. And if you do like it, as always, it helps to give a like and subscribe to the channel. I will be taking you all the way through to my races from where I am currently. You'll join me on all of my long runs. You'll see some other kinds of runs, which we'll get into shortly as well. So it's great to be back. I feel like I've got my mojo back and have a reason to be filming again rather than just filming for the sake of it. So I hope you enjoy. Our street dog is called Dave. He already had the name when we got him and it just made us smile every time we said it. So we didn't change his name and you'll meet him in just a second sharing my pre-run banana. <laughs> Good morning. It's been a hot minute, hasn't it? Let's go for a long run together. Today's long run is two hours at an RP of two to four, so rate of perceived exertion, then 50 minutes at a five to seven, then 50 minutes back at two to four. So I've come to Wareham Forest on the Seeker Trail to do that run because where I live, it is straight out onto really, really sharp inclines. And I feel like even if I walked, it wouldn't be a two to four. <laughs> so I've come somewhere flatter and my route today should hopefully only be around 300 meters of elevation total across the nearly four hours. So let's get it and I'll chat to you some more when we're out there. Okay, so I'm out in the forest. I'm wearing a very bouncy pack today and I've never had it quite so heavy on the front before. So I didn't realize it was gonna be so heavy and so, it's not the most comfortable and I'm not even five minutes into three hours and 40. So it's going to be one of those today, <laughs> but it's a stunning day. So let's get in. This is my first video in my series that will take me to UTS 100K. So my big race of this year is Ultra Trail Snowdonia 100 kilometers. So it's actually 104 kilometers and six and a half thousand meters of elevation so it's quite a spicy one the cutoff is 32 hours so it'll be the longest i've ever run for ever currently i've done i've done a 100k race before but it had less than 2000 meters of elevation so i'm just trying to get onto my route. So this has got more than three times the elevation and that other race took me 13 hours. So I'm going to be on my feet for nearly three times the length of time. Um, so it's definitely more of a, a time on feet game here. So then this series is called Mind Over Mountain. Last year for me was all about returning to why I got into ultra running in the first place. And that was to raise money for charity. So I did a huge challenge and covered 450K in 11 days to raise money for Help the Heroes. So I didn't take on any like big epic races this year. It's a return to racing. So this YouTube series is called Mind Over Mountain because you're going to see me go from the start of my training now. I did sort of base training before Christmas and now it ramps up. 
and you're gonna come with me and see through to the 100K. So we're gonna have some night running. We're gonna be staying up all night. And I'm a try to be in bed before 10 kind of gal. So to have to stay up all night and then go on a run, it's not gonna be easy. So you're gonna come through it all with me. And it's hopefully gonna be epic. How stunning is it today though? I feel very fortunate that my long runners landed today and not two days ago when the flooding around here had roads closed. There was like grit all coming down. There was like tons of crap on the roads. We had to get diggers out to come and like clear it all. And now this is what I get to run in. Okay, I'm 2K in and I've already decided that this won't be my pack for UTS. Now, I probably need to practice with the back full because it might just be that, you know, it's not balanced right now, but this bouncing is not the one. That dog was so conflicted. It looks a little bit like Bonnie, which is sweet. Um, but its owner was going straight on and I was turned down here. And I was like, oh, I wanna play, I wanna play. And so it like ran to me, ran back, ran me, ran back. And then it just kind of like had a little panic in the middle and then ran to its owner. Um, okay, fueling. Today I've got raspberry tailwind in one bottle, two scoops, that is caffeinated. Then I've got mountain fuel, extreme energy fuel in this one, non-caffeinated, but it's carbs, electrolytes, and creatine, which I've really been loving this drink and it powered me through my challenge last year as well. So that is today's choice. I also have a Stroop waffle, just in case I fancy it. It's one of the goo ones, salted caramel. I never know what I'm gonna fancy. So I just pack everything. And then I also have the Margarita Citrus Glyph Blocks and one Morton Gel 160. I know I'm going to regret it because I'm going to need a wee so quickly. I already need one, but I'm going to need it more. But I'm going to have to drink more of my liquid fuel just to get rid of some of this weight. Um, it's the easiest way to get it down because everything else doesn't weigh much. The problem is I need everything on the front because if it's in the back I then have to stop, take the pack off to get it out when I need it so it's annoying. Wareham Forest is absolutely stunning on a day like this and I'm following a route on my watch so I won't get lost and I can actually make my way back to the car. I've actually ordered a microphone for my GoPro and a lighting mod so that I can take you on night runs with me, take you to run club with me. Yeah, I'm excited about this. Like, this is a huge race. It's really gonna push me so far out of my comfort zone, but I'm excited. I think it feels so, unreachable that it's exciting rather than terrifying but I've actually got so much self-belief at the moment that whilst it feels unattainable currently it doesn't feel like come made that it will be so I don't know if that makes sense to anyone but the whole point in goals and training I guess is that you're working towards something that you can't currently like right now do so yeah and I must say I'm working with an absolutely fantastic coach, Brad. He goes by BW Performance on Instagram. I'll pop his details here. But I'm really enjoying his coaching. He is really empathetic to the fact that my entire life isn't running. I'm not a full-time runner. 
I have a full time job. Mark is often away with work. I have two dogs that uh, come with their own difficulties. They aren't easy come, easy go lucky dogs. So they require a little bit more working around. I love them to pieces, but it does make it a little bit harder to get out by myself sometimes when Mark's not here. Um, he's really, really empathetic to that. I had a terrible run a few weeks ago and then convinced myself I was completely uncoachable. And he called me up and he was like, Charlotte, what are you talking about? Talked me off the ledge and we are carrying on. And I've had some really good long runs since then. And you no, know, it's not all doom and gloom, but you know, sometimes just get in your head when you have a really terrible time and it feels like you're so how do I feel I was a PT once for a few years or a number of years actually um technically I'm obviously still qualified like I'm gonna stop and talk now I'm dying for a wee I'll be back but the problem with being a female and needing a wee it is so hard oh that might be as I was saying for being female and needing a wee something like this like yes for the most part there's no one around but you can always guarantee that when you're when you find a spot you're like yeah this is great someone just pokes their head out there's always a random little route that you can't even see from where you are and then someone's strolling along what i was actually saying was that i was a pt and i know what it's like when you feel like someone isn't respecting all of your expertise and time that you put into creating the coaching plan and so then when I have to move sessions around or change it or things like told me it was the grand scheme of things I've been smashing it so you know it's not like I've been expecting that I'll run 100k but I'm skipping runs I'm skipping strength and conditioning like I'm just moving things around more than non-completion but my main point whoa what's going on here but what my main point was is that Brad's a great coach so if you need a coach check him out I'm having a great time he's really open you know a bit of banter also takes some board of my weirdnesses because I don't have a body that functions like I think typical bodies do or should or are built hello Okay, I'm tanking in. I've been sipping from my bottles. It's waffle time. So this is Goo's version of a Stroop waffle. Um, unfortunately, no coffee. Put it on top of here, but it's got added electrolytes. This is the salted caramel one, and it's bloody delicious. Oh. genuinely past my ankles and freezing cold. <laughs> I can hear my feet squelching. Um, that wasn't what I had planned. Twelve K in, about an hour and fifteen. Solidly a good third of the way in now. I don't know if you can see, but in there it's about Wow, about five or six deer. This place is pretty cool. I've never ran here. This whole route, to be fair, is really lovely. It's a bit windy now, my hands are cold, so the gloves are likely coming back on. This is really cool. So I'm 
jumped into this field because I saw a footpath sign to avoid running on another road following what I thought looked like a path. There's every chance of the gate that it's actually a deer track that I'm following. I've seen another deer and it was really beautiful. Hour and 48 in, just having a little bit of respite, a margarita citrus cliff block. I've never had this flavour before. Oh, what is... That flavour really reminds me, not of a margarita, of a sweet of Hadamal Junga. I'm gonna have to think on this one. It might not be sweet. It might be like a lemon and lime, like, ice pop, you know the ones that come in like a rectangle long packaging and they're like you freeze at home basically. I think it tastes like a melted one of those. Now we're talking, hit a public bridal way and I can pick it up a bit now. Now admittedly I have had a slow couple of kilometres either through the deer track or uphill and whatnot. So, oh goodness gracious me, this is the route. Um, second time I've done that to detach myself to Thorntons. This is now supposed to be 50 minutes bog at an RPE of five to seven. Now, I would love to, once I get onto something a bit more runnable. I thought I was onto a winner with that bridal way, but I was only on there for like two minutes. So let's see where this takes me. I know I can see I'm heading into the woods. So I'm hoping the track opens out a bit more. Better. Let's get running again, shall we? So I'm just over two hours in now, which means I'm actually over halfway. So my run is 3.40. So I'm at two hours, 50 minutes, RPE five to seven, and then last 50 minutes, RPE two to four again. And I'll be perfectly honest, between a bouncy pack and probably being like a little bit heavier than how I prefer to feel when I run. Obviously it's just been a festive period. I don't drink a lot of alcohol generally or, you know, eat so much all the time normally. So being back in a routine from work on Monday, I think would be very good for me. I just feel a bit, heavy and that's not to say you know negative things about myself I, it's just things you feel I think when you run all the time and you run long distances all the time you become very aware I guess of how you feel when you run your best and how you feel when you don't run your best and like various contributing factors. Now all I, knew, I know all I need to do is get back on routine, drink more water, take on more nutritionally dense food. My training's going to ramp up anyway so I'm not you know about to start intentionally entering like a calorie deficit or anything to change anything because that would also be silly because I need to have the energy and the fuel to power my training and also to recover from that so if I'm not giving my body that how is it supposed to run like you know it's that analogy of a car if a car's got no petrol how it's supposed to take you anywhere so you know it's just it's just a feeling of the day that I feel a bit heavier than when I run my best and yeah it's just a, a phase I'm in right now and that's all right. Yep, 
you know, the perfect kind of ground for pushing it a bit. I hope you can see this. Two podcasts down. Now we're on to Human Lab with David Goggins. Here's a fact I didn't know. The maker of the AeroPress, I use an AeroPress for coffee every single day, nothing else, was also the founder of the Aerobee Frisbee. Now, I used to play Ultimate Frisbee uh, in sixth form, went to China to teach it. Um, and that's just such a cool fact that Aerobee Frisbees are the ones with like, the hole in the middle. Aerobee is obviously a brand, but the maker of Aerobrass is also the maker of Aerobee. <sighs> Back to the 100K. What am I most worried about? I think it has to be being really tired and running in the dark and potentially by myself. So I don't know what the scheme is with UTS. I will ask them. I know some races have like a buddy up scheme at like A stations where during the night you then stay together to get to the next A station, blah, blah, blah. I don't know where I'm going. Okay, I've had to switch my phone because my GoPro keeps powering down, saying out of battery, but when I turn it on, it says it's got like 38%. So maybe I also need a new battery for that. Um, so we're a little bit up close and personal with no sort of stabilization, but here we go. Yeah, at the best of times, on a really long run, I do think I do hallucinate sometimes. I am certain I see things that aren't there. And I think one thing that worries me about the 100K is more of that. When I'm really tired, oh God, I just accidentally skipped a step on my watch. I'm really scared of more of that by myself in the dark, which I know is is it irrational? Is it irrational? I don't know is, is the answer, but it is a potential. So I do need to do some practice for staying up through the night and then going for a run and also night runs. So some lovely people at Run Club have said they will come on some night runs with me, which is wonderful. We also do Run Club in the dark at the moment, which Certainly gets me used to running in the dark with the head torch on and everything, but that is part of a big group and not by myself. I'm not about to practice completely by myself because that is scary. So yeah, I would probably say distance, time, elevation, those that aren't the things that worry me. It's the exhaustion and hallucinating and running by myself at night. Like what if my head torch catches the eyes of a cow or something? I don't like cows. Two hours, 50 back down to RPE, two to four. 50 minutes left and then I'm done. Just finished. It ended up being four hours and five minutes because I I both overshot the route and took some wrong turns. So instead of three hours 40, it was four hours and five. But it was 36K. I wouldn't say it was the easiest run I've ever done, but and now I'm going to go eat. The only thing that could possibly follow a long run. These are the best. So this is me now back. It is the following day. That run did take it out of me. And as soon as I got home, it was, let's walk the dogs, let's make dinner, let's shower. So I didn't pick up the camera again. But that run ended up being four hours long. And I tell you, when a run is supposed to be three hours 40, you look at your map and the time and realise that you're nowhere near the car. Those following 25 minutes felt like the longest 25 minutes run ever. But the run was good. The section I was supposed to push it a bit was just conveniently timed to be either uphill or on the sludgiest, boggiest ground ever. So it didn't 100% work out, but four hours and five minutes, my first long run of 2024 is done and in the grand scheme of things, it did feel good, so I'm happy with that. Next time, you'll see me heading to Snowdonia to recce part of the route for UTS. So, I'll see you next time.